and I'm working, I will work myself into a fit. When I could, when the Bible clearly says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I don't have to do none of that. All I have to do is what he tells me to do. And guess what else? Guess what just went out the window? When all I'm focused on is, Lord, you say I do. When, I, when Lord, you say I do. Lord, you say I do. When, guess what I have to stop thinking about when I do that? You say I do. I have no clue what right is. You say I do. Right is not even in the conversation. And I bring this up because I know I'm not the only one here that struggles with this. Because we want to we want to understand. But there's a difference between understanding and being right. It is absolutely biblical to want to understand. If it, it, God said that we were supposed to seek Him and He would give us the wisdom that we're asking for. <coughs> we're supposed to ask of Him and He gives us wisdom freely. And yes, I'm really, what I'm doing is I'm paraphrasing from a lot of different parts of the Bible with that. That is not direct scripture anywhere. But that is a true statement. He says, we go to Him, He gives us knowledge. He never promised to give us right. Never promised that. He promised to give us wisdom. I don't know about y'all, but knowledge is dangerous. Knowledge is dangerous. There's a lot of things I know I wish I did. There are some things you can't unlearn. And I wish there are some pains that I wish I didn't have. And they are pains. You know why I have them pains? Because I went out in a quest for knowledge instead of seeking wisdom from the Lord. And I went digging. And my wife will tell you that nobody digs better than me. You give me a thread, you give me a thread, I will unravel a blanket. Amen. In the process, <laughs> in the process of, of, of trying to figure out what true is. Trying to figure out what right is. Y'all don't understand, this preaching hits me hard. Uh, I, even while I was sitting there, it's like, Lord, you really can't. You expect me to give this message. I mean, you might as well. You might as well tell the tax collector how much he thinks people ought to pay if you want me to give this message. <clears throat> but he said, give it. So there we are. Amen. Let's continue. <clears throat> he said, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Amen. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So how do you... The question becomes then... How do you stand on truth and let go of right? <clears throat> there is a there is a um, a writer, Stephen Covey. I'm not really quite sure where he stands with the Lord. There are parts of his books that he he uh, he points to, but it's it's not Jesus. The way, he, just the way he describes it. I ain't saying that he's not saved. I'm saying that in his writings I haven't found evidence. But, but he says something that's very biblically true. It is, in a, in, a, in a problem, seek first to understand and then to be understood. When you're having a disagreement with somebody, he said that the first thing, that in order for you to ever find common ground, you have to truly understand where the other person is feeling, seeing, wanting. You have, to, you have to want to understand what the other person is seeing, feeling, and wanting. Before you're ever going to ever make headway on those things that are important to you. God didn't say that you had to give up everything that was important to you. He said you had to make it less important than the relationship. When it comes to you and God, it doesn't mean that He doesn't, He doesn't, it's not that God doesn't value the things that are important to you. He just wants to be first. Amen. It's not that He doesn't value you for you to be warm, fed, loved on this world. 
But he wants you to love him first. <coughs> Seek him first the kingdom of God. And all things will be added unto you. Mercy and truth bound around your neck. I think he's very, the Lord, the Lord's very intentional with everything. He put mercy before truth. I believe you need to go in that order. And yes, that was Michael's opinion right there. I like that. Like, when I'm stepping away from the Lord, I like to let you know. But I do believe that he wrote it the way he meant it. Mercy and truth. Graciousness to one another. This is not that important when it comes to me and you. No matter what it is, this is not that this is not more important than me and you. Now, my wife would be happy to tell you that there are some deal breakers in our relationship. But how we take a stand for our deal breakers, by the way. A woman calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning saying, hey, honey, that's a deal breaker. Amen. Right? Can we say amen on that, right? Amen. amen. But she doesn't remind me constantly about what a deal breaker that is. Because what did I say about earlier in this thing? Truth is self-evident. I know there's some things that, that, that are just not, not kosher in the mama-me relationship. And God, it, it only makes it better that God said that too. But my point is, how much time do we spend arguing about that? <coughs> we don't. Because truth is self-evident. And we don't have to argue that if, if, that if a woman calls me that I'm in the wrong and she's in the right. Even if she's right and I'm wrong. It doesn't matter. Because what really matters when you're having, a dis when you're having this disagreement, and I take this back to the Lord, what really matters is not right or wrong. What matters is, is that relationship whole or not? Is that relationship whole or not? And as long as you're focused on being right, it will never be whole. That's why you got to have mercy first. You too. I hope you're getting that. Because as long as either one of you have to be right, it will never be whole. This isn't a preaching for them. I'm just saying, I know that, that point. It hurt. We struggle. We all struggle with that point. You're not alone. You too. Y'all are just going, look, look, we all get to laugh at you because we've been through it. Amen. Right? We all get to laugh at y'all because we know, honey. Heard it, right? right. We've been through it. Amen. And I... And I'll tell you what, the only way we ever made any headway is that we, that we, that we decided neither one of us were right. We surrendered. We decided the relationship was more important. Tonight, y'all, if there's somebody here that has, has, doesn't have that relationship with God, I need you to understand that that relationship is the most important thing ever. Amen. And it doesn't matter if you, it matters to a certain degree. There's one thing you need to agree on with God. You need to, you need to agree that you're a sinner. Amen. You need to see yourself in a fallen state. If you do not see yourself in a fallen state, then you're wrong. <laughs> Sorry, that's the one part of it where it goes away from the general message. <laughs> because between us and God, if anybody's wrong, it's us. Amen. That's the only way that this, that, that's the only thing about this that is somewhat different. Because God is right. He is true, and, it doesn't, we don't, and, and, and we don't have to argue it, because it doesn't matter how long we argue it, God will still be God when we're done. It said, that's right, it said, you know, even, even Jacob wrestled with God all night. Even Jake, Jake, if, if, uh, Jacob wrestled with God all night. And in the end, it didn't end with God saying, Jacob, you're right. <laughs> no, it didn't end that way. But at the that's right. The answer the question. But at the same time, at the end of it, God didn't didn't make a big point about how He was right. He simply made Himself available to have a personal relationship with Jacob, and that's what He's doing for each one, every one of y'all tonight. 
Amen. He's making himself available for you to have that personal relationship. The one you can't work for. Amen. The one you cannot do. I don't know about y'all know, but we know our human relationships require work. Lots. Lots. Amen. They require a lot of work. But all God wants is for, you to, is for you to want the same thing that He wants, and that's the relationship. Amen. <coughs> he doesn't want to argue with you about who's right, because it's pointless. He's right. He doesn't want to argue with it. I mean, the truth of the matter is, God can be right about some things that hurt you. God can be right about some things that actually cause you emotional pain. Some things that have happened in your life. Some things that you used to have. Some things that you want to have that He doesn't think is right for you. Some of His rights are not easy. But he never, but in his word, he never uses those rights to keep you from him. He'd rather <laughs> talk about love. That's right. Romans 5 and 8. Uh, you know, God commanded his love toward us, but while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Amen. And back into John, it said that, uh, here in His love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Even God, who is right in all things, doesn't argue about being right. we got to let it go. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now that's the, that's the familiar, familiar part about this chapter. And quite honestly, when I saw that, did any of y'all, listen, let me, i got to take a, a quick straw poll here. Any of y'all stay away from parts of the Bible that you've heard a thousand times? Like you get, as soon as you see those words, it's like your mind kind of shuts down. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> did any of y'all ever do, am I the only one that does that? Sometimes I'm the only one that does that. <laughs> now see, I'm not going to argue whether she's right or not. <laughs> but my point is, sometimes when we've read something enough, and we've heard it enough, it's just sort of like when our parents are going on and on about the same thing. We stop listening. As soon as, we, as, soon as they start out with that, the first three key phrases, key words in that phrase, we go, here we go again. So when he showed me this chapter today, i got to be honest with you. I was right there in Michael land on that. Lord, I'm not going to talk about what I've heard people talk about all this time. I mean, it's just, it's tired. It's done. It's not tired. It's not done. It's the, it's the Word of God. It's what He told me to talk about. And so, trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. I... Why did I have to, why did I not want to talk about this? Because I struggle with this one. This is one of the hardest things that God asks me to do. Because I have this, I have all this understanding that he put in his head. <laughs> Mom, you need to quit laughing at me so much. <laughs> you need to quit laughing at me so much. Swamp. You need to be right. Right there. In right. <laughs> uh, all thy ways acknowledge him, moving on. And he shall direct thy path. Okay, Mom. 3 verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> But then it also, and here I go, and depart from evil. <laughs> yeah, I'll think of that. I think I'm going to end on that point. Be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes. Tonight, I really, 
I need you to let go of being right. Not because it's my turn, but because I don't want any more for that to be what comes between me and whomever, especially if it's God. Tonight I need you to let go and want God more than wanting answers. The reason why we hurt is not because we don't understand what God wants from us. It's because we don't want to do what He's asking of us. We don't want to surrender. We don't want to commit. Scott, I felt like to let you 